we're again so grateful for for those who volunteered to speak at our first ever UK online user group and uh, up next we have uh, Michael Hartley from Ramble who's got a really interesting um, and, and terribly useful uh, example that he'd like to cover for us. Good morning. Um, if you want to just do a quick intro while this slide is up and then I'll make you the presenter. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, cool. So yeah, hi everyone. I'm uh, Mike Hartley. Um, I'm a technical bin manager from Ramble. So I've been working at Ramble now for uh, nearly eight years. In Ramble, we've been using uh, ID8 software now for, well, for as long as I've been at Ramble and probably a bit before that um, to some extent. Um, but then we've been using um, the full suite of tools now for just over a year in the company. So, yeah, I've been kind of my, my main, um, you know, my, one of my areas is really dealing with, with ID8 and dealing with the rollout and, uh, you know, awareness within the company. So, yeah, but it's it's good. It, we've we've noticed a huge difference in using ID8 tools um, over the past year. Um, we're only going to get uh, get more efficient the uh, the more we learn from them, the more we use them. All right. Let me go ahead and make you presenter so you can talk about the the clash. I think that it's this class Navis clash uh, workflow here. So let me go ahead. And yeah. Can you see the Excel sheet? Yeah. yeah thanks. Brilliant. Okay. Great stuff. Um. So yeah. Uh, Bear with me on this one. This is the first time I've uh, I've had to present this workflow. It's it's a pretty new workflow I've just come up with, but um, thought it'd be uh, worth sharing. So yeah, as uh, Glenn has touched on there, this is just a a workflow to um, automate our void cuts in in structural slabs based on um, MEP pipe positions. So the just a summary of the um, the process is we. In Navisworks, we run our clash detection, um, and we do an extract uh, extraction from Navisworks, uh, which purely all, all I'm interested um, in that extraction for this process is the element ID. So that's the same element ID that you get from a Revit model. Um, so with that, I then use Bimlink to do an extraction from the MEP model and an extraction from the structural model. So the extraction from the um, MEP model is uh, this one here. So what I've pulled out here is you, you obviously get the element ID as standard. Um, I've pulled out uh, family name, type name, level, and um, most importantly, the two coordinates, the X and Y, and that's the, the center of the pipe um, and the diameter of that pipe. So um, and for, those that, for those that are interested, this is my Navis export, so I've got um, a bunch of other data that has exported, but I'm purely just interested in this ID here, which matches the ID here. So um, the extraction I do from the structural model is just to export a generic model schedule. Uh, so I've created a, a void family, just as a, which is a generic model. Um, so I extract that out from um, from the structural model, and then that's the schedule that I'm going to um, end up adding the voids to. So this this is what the um, the structural uh, export looks like here. Uh, so what I've done, I've set up this um, spreadsheet beforehand uh, to export the data to. So just to kind of briefly explain it, I'll try not to go into too much detail in, in what I've done in Excel, um, but this is kind of a template I've, I've set up to start with. Uh, the the non-coloured tabs, if you like, are the um, extractions that I get. So the the two, um, or the the, the yeah the, the ex Navis export and the MEP export. The green tabs are where I'm sort of mining for the data, um, and then the the um, red pink schedule here is the it's the extraction I get from the structural model, but that's also the the end spreadsheet where I'm going to input my um, data to to import the voids. So once I've done my exports, I, I should mention as well that I've used um, ID8 automation to, um, which is great, new tool to um, automate the extraction of the MEP data. Uh, so that was brilliant too, because we on this particular job I've we've we've um, Use this process on. We've got a number of MEP models, so I can just open up ID8 Automate. I can run it so it opens up the Revit model in the background. Uh, it extracts the dot link file that I've already set up, um, and then it I it can point that to um, export to my spreadsheet here that I've predefined. 
so that's brilliant that's it that's one automated process um and similarly i could do the same with the structure one if i wanted but um in this case i've, I've gone and done that manually because i needed to uh, do something as well with creating new types which i'll explain in a minute um so yeah once i've got all that data here so the first task for me to do is to basically mine for the the information so um i've first of all i've run a lookup um again i try not to go into too much detail of how i've used formulas and so on but i've run a lookup of the element ids that come from the navis extraction against the element ids that come from the mep um revit model extraction and what that ends up giving me is a list of all the uh ids of all, uh, uh, list of all the ids of the uh, the pipes that are clashing. So basically straight away, I've managed to take out all the pipes that I'm not interested in that haven't been picked up as a, as a clash. So uh, with that, I've, I've got the ID and then I've also picked up a um, pipe diameter for that ID. Now, what uh, the, one of the requirements for this project was to, we needed the void um, to be the size of the pipe plus tolerance. So I'll just give myself a field here to input that tolerance. Um, and then I'm just doing some simple addition here to add the tolerance to that pipe diameter. So basically I end up with a list here now, a column of all my pipe diameters um, with the tolerance added. So I'm then, um, once I've got all that in place, I the first thing I need to do is actually create void types. So that's the other thing I didn't mention is I've done another BIMLink spreadsheet just to export my uh, types, uh, my generic family types from Revit, uh, which just looks like this. Um, so this is a new bit I've added. I'll talk about that in a second, but this is um, what I've basically pulled out. So there's a family I already set up, which just had a single um, type which is a 160 by 160 void um, so I want I needed to create the new voids based on the pipe diameters that I was getting so I've used uh, this um, spreadsheet here to get me that data just use a simple uh, pivot table to uh, hunt for the diameters in here so now I've got a table of all the diameters that exist and then I'm just using um, some uh, formulas in Excel here just to give me that data in a format that I need to copy and paste to my uh, my type schedule. So basically I've got this here, I can just copy and paste that data into here. I'll import that into Revit and that's created all my types for me. Um, I mean I could have just done that manually maybe with there only being a, a few types here but it's good to run that process anyway just to see how many different pipe diameters you're getting. I, I may have got 2030 in which case it would have been a lot more efficient to do it through here so once i've done that um, that's my types created i can then start uh, creating these specific instances so i come to my uh, instance schedule here and again i won't talk too much about the, the formulas but i've i've done some um some lookups uh to basically give me the information in the uh, order that i want so i can just copy and paste that to my um schedule that I'm going to import into the structure model. So I've just organized that like this. The, the green is just for, for me that I know this is the, the content that I copy over. Um, so once I've got that, so what I've got here, I've ended up with the, the family um, the family name, which has come from the, the family and type name, which is read from here now automatically. Um, and then I've just uh, put in a load of information that I wanted in my void family. Uh, but crucially, I've now got the coordinates of the which is the dead center point of that void family and um, which matches the center of the pipes so i can now copy and paste all that data to here uh, which looks like that so what, I, what i've done here there is when i exported my uh, generic model instant schedule it came in with um, a bunch of all the, the voids that already existed um, so i just deleted those uh, for now just to make it a bit cleaner easier to, to see so now you can see if i just add new to here in the id column that means it will create a new instance for me um, and then there's all of the other information that i've copied over um, and that's it so 
it's a, it looks a little bit complicated of how I've got the data, but really the process is, is very simple. Um, and I, I've just gone that extra step to help me, you know, automate that that data. Um, but once, you, once you've got that in a template, it's all very nice and easy to use. Um, you know, and once you rerun the class test, you can just rerun the extraction, import, job done. Uh, this has saved so much time. Uh, so just to show you, can you see my uh, Revit screen there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Brilliant. Good stuff. So I've just um, done an import on a, a few types in here. So just a, in the style of uh, what I've done earlier. Um, so this is the structural slab model with the uh, one of the MEP models linked in. And I'm just going to, of course, use Explorer to find those for me. Uh, it's gone onto my other screen. I have a question, Mike. Um, yeah. Real quickly, uh, and I guess I can tell by looking at this now that I'm seeing it, but the the pipes and the slabs are in the same file or different files? They're in different files. That's what yeah, I thought. So I've, yeah, this is a, yeah. Sorry, this is I'm I'm now in the structure model uh, with the MEP model linked in. Thanks. Uh, right, cool. So yeah, using Explorer. Um, I mean, I've only done an import of a few of these instances just to speed it up, but um, when I run this on the main project, it came in with a bunch of types in here, so I can select all of those at once. And this is the family that I've created um, in here. So um, as you can see, let's just zoom in on an area here. Yep, great. It's done exactly what I needed to. It's uh, cut exactly where the pipe is. Um, and in this case, um, this void family that I've set up, it's a um, it's set by height, so you can change the the height of the, the cut, basically. Um, and I've added in like a, a red line into here. So if you were to just isolate the structure model on its own um, and look at it in a plan view or, or whatever, you could see where those um, voids have been placed um, easily. And I, I de deliberately wanted a family that didn't cut at all. So that you need now need to go in and cut those um, because part of the um, workflow we wanted to, to do was to engage the engineer then to review these voids uh, because not all of them uh, might be required to be cut into the slab. Um, so the engineer can now use this um, to review which ones they want. They can add in uh, data uh, into the the family nice. here. Um, yeah, and um, do the workflow and then cut the voids. That's great. That was my that was going to be my question. I love I love this workflow, Mike. I think uh, it, I think I mentioned to you when you when you brought it up. Uh, for as a tip, th this is something that I have been asked uh, about before. I know we have customers who were wanting to do this workflow, and I think the what there there's obviously several challenges which you've highlighted um, in your workflow. Um, the ability, the relatively new ability for BIM Link to create the new types was was something that you added to make it a little bit easier, which I loved. Um, but also the placement of um, the creation and placement of the generic model elements through BIM Link is also something that's relatively new. I don't know if everybody on the call is aware of that, um, but we've been asked increasingly to use BIM Link to create new things. So I'm, I'm excited to, to see you do that. And the, the cutting of the voids was a big question in my mind, like how, um, you, know, how you were going to do that on the back end. So it's, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear your, your your logic on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, so, I mean, you know, that, that may be something we, we develop um, of how, how to automate the cutting of, of those voids. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, for now, this worked pretty well for us, actually, because we wanted to purposely uh, go through and make sure we've reviewed all of those individually before we go ahead and, and cut them. Um, I'm sorry, there's, yeah. Jonathan was asking if he could talk or maybe he has a question. Oh, yeah, of course, Jonathan, please unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Hello, sorry, I, I work with Michael. I was just going to add one thing. Um, in previous workflows, a lot of people said, well, you know, you could do this with Dynamo uh, and other things as well, you know, in terms of placing these families. But um, uh, part of a previous workflow that we tested used Dynamo. We had all sorts of issues with um, coordinate systems in terms of trying to make things work with very large coordinate systems within Dynamo, which it didn't like at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, having the ID8 uh, tools and the ability to do this as cleanly as it does, has saved us so much extra time that we were um, that we were uh, that we were spending just fixing things because we used Dynamo workflow initially. 
So, yeah. you know, um, if you're if you're placing lots of uh, objects using Dynamo now and you're having to deal with coordinate systems and having to um, kind of localize things for Dynamo to then have to, you know, change them uh, for the project in reality, you don't have to deal with all of those issues anymore using these tools. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for that, Jonathan. I appreciate it. All right, we Can have... I just add very quickly, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. just, just, I was just going to mention that um, this is one workflow I, I wanted to share today, but one of the main things we've actually been doing um, on this particular project that Jonathan and I have been working on is the main thing we've been using BIMLink for is actually to place clash spheres. So in, in exactly the same way we're using coordinates, mm -hmm. uh, we get the coordinates from Navisworks and then we place these clash spheres that users can then, we dump into the models that users can then go and review um, and they can tick off once they've actioned the clash kind of thing. Um, Do the so clash actually, spheres have like notes on them, or is it just a it's just a visual? It's, just, it's like a, just a visual um, yeah. sphere in in three D space, but it has we've got a load of uh, parameters against it that you can add comment review comments on, um, and you can you know assign to people, uh, you can tick resolved and it disappears that kind of stuff. Nice, that's awesome. I love it. Thank All right, well, thank you so much. As I don't see any questions in the panel right now uh, for Mike. Thanks so much, Mike, for sharing. Um, we are going to be asking. Uh, at the end of the presentation today, if anybody wants to volunteer for future presentations, um, and we're very grateful for those who are willing to, to share their experiences. Mm -hmm.